So you want to be president. Written by Judith St. George and illustrated by David Small. There are good things about being president and there are bad things about being president. One of the good things is that the president lives in a big white house called the White House. Another good thing about being president is that the president has a swimming pool, bowling alley, and movie theater. The president never has to take out the garbage. The president doesn't have to eat yucky vegetables. As a boy, George Bush had to eat broccoli. When George Bush grew up, he became president. That was the end of the broccoli. One of the bad things about being president is that the president always has to be dressed up. William McKinley wore a frock coat, vest, pinstripe trousers, stiff white shirt, black satin tie, gloves, a top hat, and a red carnation in his buttonhole every day. The president has to be polite to everyone. The president can't go anywhere alone. The president has lots of homework. People get mad at the president. Someone once threw a cabbage at William Howard Taft. That didn't bother Taft. He quipped, I see that one of my adversaries lost his head. Lots of people want to be president. If you want to be president, it might help if your name is James. Six presidents were named James. President Carter liked to be called Jimmy. Four Johns, four Williams. President Clinton liked to be called Bill. Two Georges, two Andrews, and two Franklins. All became president. You probably weren't born in a log cabin. That's too bad. People are crazy about log cabin presidents. They elected eight. William Harrison was born in a big Virginia mansion, though he won the election with a log cabin and hard cider slogan. If you want to be president, your size doesn't matter. Presidents have come in all shapes and sizes. Abraham Lincoln was the tallest, six feet, four inches. His stovepipe hat made him look even taller. James Madison was the smallest, five feet, four inches, and only 100 pounds. William Howard Taft was the biggest, more than 300 pounds. He was so big that he had a special tub built for his White House bathroom. Four men could fit in the tub. Maybe Taft's problem was that presidents can order any food they want. Andrew Jackson once ordered his guests turtle soup, oysters, fish, beef, turkey, mutton chops, chicken, mushrooms, string beans, partridges, duck, pudding, jellies, and lots of wine. All at one dinner. Though the Constitution says you'll have to wait until you're 35, young, old, and in-between have become president. Theodore Teddy Roosevelt, at 42, was the youngest. He had pillow fights with his children and played football on the White House lawn. You must always remember that the president is about six, a friend said. Ronald Reagan was the oldest. When he first ran for president, he was 69. He joked that it was the 30th anniversary of his 39th birthday. Some presidents joked and some didn't. Presidents' personalities have all been different. William McKinley was so nice that he tried to stop a mob from attacking the man who had just shot him. Benjamin Harrison was so cold that one senator said talking to Harrison was like talking to a hitching post. Calvin Coolidge was so shy and quiet that a dinner guest once made a bet that she could get him to say more than two words. You lose, he told her. Andrew Jackson certainly wasn't shy. When he ran for president, his opponents printed a list of his duels, fights, shootings, and brawls, 14 in all. Don't worry about your looks. Abraham Lincoln was a homely man, but he was one of our best presidents. He reunited the country by winning the Civil War. Someone once called Lincoln two-faced. If I am two-faced, would I wear the face I have now? Lincoln asked. Warren Harding was a handsome man but he was one of our worst presidents. He gave government jobs to his crooked friends. I am not fit for this office and never should have been here, he admitted. Do you have pesky brothers and sisters? 
every one of our presidents did. Benjamin Harrison takes the prize. He had 11. It's lucky he grew up on a 600 acre farm. James Polk and James Buchanan both had nine. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and John Kennedy each had eight. Two presidents were orphans, Andrew Jackson and Herbert Hoover. A president in your family tree is a plus. John Quincy Adams was John Adams' son. Theodore Roosevelt and Franklin Roosevelt were fifth cousins. Benjamin Harrison was William Harrison's grandson. James Madison and Zachary Taylor were second cousins. Some presidents threw money around and some were penny pinchers. James Monroe ordered French silverware, china, candlesticks, chandeliers, clocks, mirrors, vases, rugs, draperies, and furniture for the White House. 93 crates in all. William Harrison was thrifty. He walked to the market every morning with a basket over his arm. Do you have a pet? All kinds of pets have lived in the White House mostly dogs. Herbert Hoover had three dogs, Piney, Snowflake, and Tut. Tut must have been a Democrat. He and his Republican master never got along. Franklin Roosevelt's dog, Fala, was almost as famous as his owner. George Bush's dog wrote Millie's book, Adventures of a White House Dog, as reported to Mrs. Bush. Ulysses Grant had horses. Benjamin Harrison's goat pulled his grandchildren around in a cart. The Coolidge's had a pet raccoon. Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton preferred cats. Theodore Roosevelt's children didn't just have pets. They ran a zoo. They had dogs, cats, guinea pigs, snakes, mice, rats, badgers, raccoons, parrots, and a Shetland pony named Algonquin. To cheer up his sick brother, young Quinton once took Algonquin upstairs in the White House elevator. You don't have to be musical to be president. Ulysses Grant certainly wasn't. He knew only two tunes. One is Yankee Doodle, he said, and the other one isn't. But many presidents were musical. Thomas Jefferson, John Tyler, and Woodrow Wilson played the violin. John Quincy Adams, the flute. Chester Arthur, the banjo. Harry Truman and Richard Nixon, the piano. Bill Clinton, the saxophone and Warren Harding almost any brass instrument, including the sousaphone. Some presidents knew how to dance, and some didn't. Our first president did a mean minuet. At his inaugural ball, George Washington danced with every lady but his wife. Mrs. W. had stayed home. James Madison's opinion of his inaugural ball? I would much rather be in bed. Abraham Lincoln wasn't much of a dancer. Miss Todd, I should like to dance with you in the worst way, he told his future wife. Miss Todd later told a friend, he certainly did. Woodrow Wilson liked to do the jig step while singing silly ditties. Not all presidents danced, but most had a sport. John Quincy Adams was a first-rate swimmer. Once when he was skinny dipping in the Potomac River, a woman reporter snatched his clothes and sat on them until he gave her an interview. Ulysses Grant raced his rig through the streets of Washington and was arrested for speeding. Rutherford Hayes played croquet on the White House lawn. Ronald Reagan split wood. William McKinley's idea of exercise was to sit under a tree with a good book. Golf has been big with presidents. Dwight Eisenhower and John Kennedy were especially good. But when Gerald Ford, George Bush, and Bill Clinton teamed up for a golf game, three of their shots clobbered spectators. Though most presidents went to college, nine didn't. George Washington, Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, Zachary Taylor, Millard Fillmore, Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, Grover Cleveland, and Harry Truman. Andrew Johnson couldn't read until he was 14. He didn't learn to write until after he was married. Thomas Jefferson was top-notch in the brains department. He was an expert on agriculture, law, politics, music, geography, surveying, philosophy, and botany. In his spare time, he designed his own house, a mansion, founded the University of Virginia, and whipped up the Declaration of Independence. If you want to be president, you might consider joining the army. George Washington, Andrew Jackson, William Harrison, 
Zachary Taylor, Ulysses Grant, Rutherford Hayes, James Garfield, Chester Arthur, Benjamin Harrison, and Dwight Eisenhower were all generals. And you can't be a general. Be a hero, like Theodore Roosevelt or John Kennedy. Roosevelt's rough riders charged up Kettle Hill to help win the Spanish-American War. Kennedy led his crew to safety in World War II when the Japanese sank his PT boat. Don't be a Franklin Pierce. In his very first battle, Franklin Pierce's horse bucked. He was thrown against his saddle and fainted. His horse fell, broke its leg, and Pierce hurt his knee. He got elected anyway. Another route to the White House is to be vice president, though most don't think much of the job. Truman's vice president, Alvin Barkley, told about a man who had two sons. One went to sea, the other one was elected vice president. Neither was heard from again. Who's ever heard of Alvin Barkley? Other vice presidents have been heard from. John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Martin Van Buren, Richard Nixon, and George Bush were all elected president. Gerald Ford became president when Richard Nixon resigned. John Tyler, Miller Fillmore, Calvin Coolidge, and Harry Truman moved up when a president got sick and died. Andrew Johnson, Chester Arthur, Theodore Roosevelt, and Lyndon Johnson became top men when guns were drawn, bullets flew, and a president was assassinated. Almost any job can lead to the White House. Presidents have been lawyers, teachers, farmers, sailors, engineers, surveyors, mayors, governors, congressmen, senators, and ambassadors. Harry Truman owned a men's shop. Andrew Johnson was a tailor. Ronald Reagan was a movie actor. One thing is certain. If you want to be president and stay president, be honest. Harry Truman paid for his own postage stamps. Grover Cleveland was famous for his motto, tell the truth. Other presidents weren't so honest. Democrat Bill Clinton was impeached for lying under oath. Republican Richard Nixon's staff broke into Democratic headquarters to steal campaign secrets. He covered up the crime and then lied about it. That was the end of Richard Nixon as president. There they are, a mixed bag of 41 presidents. What did they think of being head man? George Washington, who became our very first president in 1789, worried about his new line of work. I greatly fear that my countrymen will expect too much from me, he wrote to a friend. He was a howling success. Some loved the job. No president has ever enjoyed himself as much as I, Theodore Roosevelt said. Others hated it. The four most miserable years of my life, John Quincy Adams complained. Every president was different from every other, and yet no woman has been president. No person of color has been president. No person who wasn't a Protestant or Roman Catholic has been president. But if you care enough, anything is possible. 34 presidents came and went before a Roman Catholic, John Kennedy, was elected. Almost 200 years passed before a woman, Geraldine Fiaro, ran for vice president. It's said that people who run for president have swelled heads. It's said that people who run for president are greedy. They want power. They want fame. But being president can be wanting to serve your country. Like George Washington, who left the Virginia plantation he loved three times to lead the country he loved even more. It can be looking toward the future, like Thomas Jefferson, who bought the Louisiana Territory and sent Lewis and Clark West to find a route to the Pacific. They did. It can be wanting to turn lives around like Franklin Roosevelt, who provided soup and bread for the hungry, jobs for the jobless, and funds for the elderly to live on. It can be wanting to make the world a better place like John Kennedy, who sent Peace Corps volunteers around the globe to teach and help others. Every single president has taken this oath. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Only 35 words, but it's a big order when you're president of this country. Abraham Lincoln was tops at filling that order. I know very well that many others might in this matter, as in others, do better than I can, he said, but I am here. 
I must do the best I can and bear the responsibility of taking the course which I feel I ought to take. That's the bottom line. Tall, short, fat, thin, talkative, quiet, vain, humble, lawyer, teacher, or soldier. This is what most of our presidents have tried to do, each in his own way. Some succeeded, some failed. If you want to be president, a good president, pattern yourself after the best. Our best have asked more of themselves than they thought they could give. They have had the courage, spirit, and will to do what they knew was right. Most of all, their first priority has always been the people and the country they served.